So the weather's starting to get a little bit cooler and you're thinking about turning on your hot tub and getting it ready for the fall. Because you've prepped uh, correctly and winterized it uh, or summerized it correctly, uh, your hot tub should look something like this. It's nice and clean and uh, no major mold spots or anything else. There might be a little bit of sitting water, in which case you can use a shop vac and suck that water out. I always like to go over once over with um, uh, a rag with some chlorine, wearing some gloves because chlorine is cor uh, corrosive. And just make sure that it's nice and clean. Let the sun air out any potential water or residue that it's gotten in it and uh, to dry out your cover a little bit, which shouldn't be holding that much, uh, that much water anyways. Next step to do is we're gonna open and access your pump and hook up your lines. To access your pump and the hoses, you're going to need an Allen key and you're gonna see two Allen key screws on either side and you're gonna need a 5 30 seconds Allen key and a drill. Once things are a little bit cleaner, we're gonna thoroughly inspect our pump, our lines. As you can see here, these are filled with antifreeze still, food safe of course, from the uh, summarizing of it. And uh, we're gonna take off our electrical box. It's just got a screw on the bottoms and on the tops. And we're gonna make sure that uh, all the electrical are looking good and that no wires are frayed and that there's no water that's gotten there and, and uh, started a little bit of corrosion. Corrosion can be seen on electrical wires um, by the oxidization of copper uh, or, uh, or whatever the wire is made of uh, metal, uh, which is a white residue is what it'll leave off. And as you can see here, all of our lines are looking pretty good. They're all attached to our pumps, um, and, uh, and they're all filled with antifreeze. Now it's time to start connecting things. We're gonna first connect the valves to the pump, inlet, output, make sure everything's nice and snug. Once all the uh, lines, both out and in, are installed hand tight, we're gonna close up our electrical block box with screws on four sides. Uh, now that we're ready to refill the pool, what we're gonna do is pop off the cap right here where the filter is, and we're gonna make sure the filter is out of the pool. And you're not gonna soak the filter because right now we have antifreeze in the lines, and we have to pump those out first, drain the pool, and refill it before we put our filter in there. Uh, if we don't do that, uh, what's going to happen is the filter is going to get all gummed up with the antifreeze and not work properly. So as you can see right here, we're filling it up. This goes right through the lines, right to the pump, and fills it up from the bottom up, which is what we want. Um, it helps prime the pump, it helps it from uh, burning out. And it helps your pump last a lot longer. Than the pool's full and we're about to turn it on for the first time to circulate the antifreeze throughout. We're going to go to the side of the house here. Look at this box, we're going to open it and we're going to flip the switch to the right um, and uh, turn on our pool pump. Now that our pool pump is turned on, we're uh, circulating the food safe antifreeze through it, uh, circulating the lines with the fresh water and then we're going to drain it and refill it for good and uh, start shocking with chemicals. So uh, we've drained the uh, spa completely and now we're ready to refill it again. We're going to refill it again from the filter. So now uh, we've filled up the pool once again and uh, we put it on boost mode and the way to do that is to go to pump number two and hold that for 10 seconds until you see the BOO boost mode. And what that'll do is it'll run your pump continuously for about 60 seconds on high. And uh, what we're doing here is we've got our filter in. We let it soak for about 60 minutes in the water as we were filling it up. And we're bringing uh, the water level all the way up to almost the headrest level. Once the spa is filled up with water, we're going to put some chemicals in to make sure that it's well balanced. The first thing I did was I put uh, two parts. This is part A and this is part B right here. It says part B and it says part A as well on it. I put the uh, spa boss in. I put 150 milliliters. And there's a helpful guide along the side here. 150 milliliters. And if you read the instructions here, it specifically says add 125 millimeters per thousand liters. Um, my hot tub, the Arctic Cub, um, has uh, 1,200 liters roughly. So I put 150 milliliters of bromade in there. And after adding the bromade and letting this uh, 
circulate uh, with uh, the pump on high on the boost setting. I put the Spa Boss Energize in. I put 10 tablespoons of this in as the initial dosage. From then on, I'm going to put about 30 milliliters of this in every week. And I'm going to put about 3 tablespoons in every time that I have a soak in it, just to maintain those levels. Then I filled up a water tester, um, roughly to about uh, 300 milliliters. And I brought it to my local Home Depot or Home Hardware and they did a test for me. And uh, then I also added some Cal Plus and some Alkaline Plus to, to balance those levels. So my calcium was a little bit low and I put about uh, 12 uh, tablespoons of that in and the Cal Plus, uh, sorry, the Alkaline Plus, I put about three tablespoons in. Now we're good and our spa is looking nice. As you can see, I'm uh, running the jets on high and I'm gonna do some weekly maintenance, so I've got my Brahm Aid here. I'm gonna put 30 milliliters of this, pour it directly in the skimmer, wait half an hour, and then I'm gonna put a couple tea, uh, a few tablespoons, so three tablespoons of the Spa Energize in, and that'll keep my levels crispy. Now you're gonna see these uh, black dials along the side of the hot tub, and here, this is your main dial to operate. This, this uh, spa only has one pump, so basically what you do is you're gonna turn it either way while the pump is not running and basically what that's going to do is it's going to centralize the uh, filter to this one uh, or all four of them, all four areas of the hot tub by just turning this slightly. These two controls right here are for aeration and basically that makes a big difference. Circulating the air through or not, this is not circulating. If I open that up, that's circulating and I have them both on because we want to create lots of bubbles. If you want to close a jet, you simply turn it to the right. If you want to open it, you turn it to the left. On both sides, everything runs through and you can feel that the jets are now pushing in all directions. Other than that, maintain your chemicals on a regular basis and you won't have any issues and you will enjoy your spa, uh, Arctic spa, jacuzzi, or uh, whatever hot tub you have for a long time. So this is the Arctic Spa Cub, uh, currently running uh, the filter on high. It's got one pump. And I'm just gonna run you through the controls real quick. So this is the one pump here. You click it once to turn it off, click it once to turn it on low, and the next time twice to turn it on high. If you hold the sep second pump, as you can see, it goes to boost setting if you hold it for about uh, 10 seconds. And boost is basically uh, the filtration setting when you wanna add chemicals for initial startup or if you're shocking it really heavily. What it does is it runs the pumps on high for about 60 minutes. To turn the boost off, you just hit the pump number one again. I wanna run it on the pump number one on high. This uh, sunshine symbol here is the light. So basically when you click that, you can't see it, but this light turns on. And so does this one underneath. Uh, the other settings that you have are temperature control. So if I turn this up, that's in uh, Fahrenheit. If I turn it down, Fahrenheit is displayed on the side right here. And that's where the ideal is. It's not the current temperature. If I hit it once, it gives me the current temperature. If I hit it again, it's telling me where my desired temperature, where I want it to be. And then we have uh, the option setting right here, which is this symbol right here. And basically what that does is it clicks the first one is filter duration. So how, when your filter turns on, what the duration of your filter is, one is one hour, two hours, and so on. You can adjust it by turning the two dials here. The second option, if you click again, is filter frequency, and this says three right here. If you have a filter three, frequency of three, it means that it cycles three times a day, and it cycles for about 20 minutes on the high jet setting right here, as you can see, and that basically um, will clean your filter. 